door knocking. Now, why is it that almost every single realtor out there completely freaks out when they hear those two words? I mean, door knocking really to me is no different than doing an open house or going on a listing presentation. It puts you front and center of the home that you got in the business to sell in the first place. You get to speak directly with the homeowner who may even tell you that they're thinking about selling now or maybe considering it in the future. Plus, you get to develop face-to-face -face rapport which builds on that whole element of trust. Now, with respect to an open house, it's just a little different dynamic, but you're still dealing with complete strangers who you are looking to work with. Obviously, you'd love to find a buyer for the house that you're sitting, or more importantly, you'd love to create even more buyers that you're working with after this open house. But in essence, it's the same kind of situation as door knocking, and so is a listing presentation if you think about it. Homeowners are reaching out to you. They'd like for you to come over and do a listing presentation because they're thinking about selling, but guess what? 90% of those homeowners you've probably never met before. So it's, again, a stranger that you're meeting up with and just a different way of approaching the business. And again, you know, after 15 years of pounding the pavement, I have learned that Homeowners really do actually appreciate the value that I bring or any door knocker brings, especially when they're dialed into the market. They love that face-to-face -face interaction and truly appreciate the opportunity in real time to figure out what's going on in their marketplace and if they want to make a decision to maybe make a change. Now, obviously, you got to make sure if you're out there already, you got to make sure you're dialed in with not only the neighborhood, but what the market is doing as well. So you can speak completely clear and transparent with an answer if you have any questions coming from any homeowners. Now, I get this question a lot, so I'm going to bang it out right here. Eric, do you love door knocking? Well, to be honest with you, I don't. But I found a way to make it work for me in a way that I really tap into a childhood memory. Find me back in my Halloween days, trick-or-treating. You know, instead of though going for trick-or-treats at the door, now in my 40s, I'm actually trick-or-treating for a high paycheck. You know, in my particular marketplace, our commissions can be around fifty to $70,000, depending on the house you're knocking any given day. So again, I get it. You know, a lot of people are totally turned off by door knocking, but there are a lot of you out there that are curious, that would just love to know how you even get started before you even hit your first door. Well, my friends, this is exactly what I am bringing in this video for you. Five ways to get prepared right now, even during this pandemic, because obviously we can't be out there, to get you ready and prepared so that when you are able to get out there and hit the doors again, you are completely confident. So let's get dialed in right now. What's up, what's up? I'm Eric Haas, now at EXP Realty in sunny Southern California. Hope you're doing fantastic and welcome to my channel. If you're new today and joining me for the first time, super stoked to have you with me. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and smash that subscription button. Also hit the bell because I'm dropping videos twice a week. That's right, folks twice a week to keep you dialed in on not only how this pandemic is impacting our local lives and our housing markets, but also to keep you in tune with the tips, tricks, and strategies to keep you successful as a buyer, seller, investor, and real estate agent, no matter what market we're facing. Now, right now, we're going to jump into the five ways to get you prepared and ready to go with confidence to hit the doors hard when door knocking is once again allowed. Now, I know you're getting excited, but before you jump in your car and get out to your farm and get your foot out out and ready to hit that first door you got to make sure that you are dialed in mentally spiritually and psychologically because you are going to hit a bunch of different things when you're hitting the doors and not only from homeowners but you're also going to be getting it a little bit from your fellow colleagues around the office who just don't understand what door knocking is and are going to give you plenty of reasons why it's not for you even though they've never door knocked a door in their entire life they're going to tell you straight up that you know you're bothering people you're annoying people if if homeowners really want information they would call you directly but guess what me bothering people for the past 15 years has got me some pretty awesome checks to the tune of 30 50 60 70 thousand dollars in commission so to be honest it's all success right there and I'm the evidence others will tell you too that they would never open a door for a stranger let alone a real estate agent but I have to tell you I've talked with those homeowners as well and I've converted them into sellers to the point where I've actually knocked on doors that have doormats that say go away and I've set listing appointments for that very week as well. So don't get this misconstrued feeling that you know all homeowners out there are ready to slam the door in your face. They're not. They find value in this face-to-face -face interaction because they want to feel comfortable with whoever they're working with when that time comes if they're looking to buy, sell, or transact on any type of real estate. Now of course you are providing value and updates face-to-face -face and 
that in itself is going to do far more than any social media ad you throw across a, a screen or any postcard that comes in the mail. And I really, really want to reiterate that to you because the face-to-face -face makes people feel comfortable. They get to feel how you are and see how you interact with things and present things. And also, a lot of times you're sharing information about you selling things in the neighborhood or representing things as well. So they're getting even more comfortable knowing that you are a presence and someone to call when they have questions. Now, while face-to-face -face interaction is key, you're not always gonna be welcome when you have that face-to-face -face interaction with a homeowner. It's not always gonna be pleasant. They're not gonna welcome you in with lemonade and have you jump right down and sign a listing agreement. You're gonna run into some people who have had a hard day. You're gonna run into other people that you just probably never wanna encounter again as well. And guess what? That is completely fine. You don't have to work with everybody. People need to be able to respect you as a professional because you know what? We're not expendable and time is money, so we can't afford to waste time on people that just aren't going to be decent human beings at the same time. So remember this, my friends, do not get sidetracked by someone who's overly mean or gives you a rough, gruff, no answer. Use that as your motivation to get out and get to the next door because that next door could definitely be a yes because it's happened to me. Now, door knocking professionally, I think after 15 years of experience, goes hand in hand with picking a farm. I've heard plenty of agents out there talk about, A, you can be random, you can be sporadic, jump in, jump out. And you know what, that works, but that works if you're looking for a particular buyer, looking for a specific property. If you're looking to build long-term results with relationships and building rapport and ultimately building that trust factor, then you're gonna have to have more skin in the game and more focus on a particular farm. Now, the great thing about having a farm though is that you can get really dialed in and deliver some really awesome marketing newsletters to keep people aware of not only what's happening in the marketplace with just sold, just listed, just reduced, and kind of what the strategies that are working or not working, depending on what market you guys are experiencing, but also dial them in on neighborhood issues as well, because people want to know what's going on in their neighborhood as well as the housing market, because usually two and two go together with respects to how the values are as well. So make sure that you're totally on point with respects to that, because people completely appreciate that type of knowledge. Now, another question I get, which is great, is do you have to live in the farm that you work in and to be honest no I happen to be working in Mar Vista for 15 years and it was just until three years ago that I actually finally moved into the neighborhood you know yeah it's a great thing because people get to see you on a professional level and then a relaxed level maybe walking around with the family or you know the family pet or what have you but you don't necessarily need to live in the neighborhood because you know at the end of the day people want value and if you can consistently provide quality content that delivers value so people have a complete understanding of what's going on in their marketplace, that, my friends, is what's gonna keep you top of mind. And that, my friends, actually has allowed me to build the business to actually move into Mar Vista in the first place. Now, a lot of people wanna ask, you know, can I have multiple farms? And absolutely, sure you can. You know, some people wanna have a luxury farm, some people wanna have an entry-level farm. You know, whatever farm you wanna have, you gotta just make sure of one thing. Make sure you can hit that farm four to six times a year. That's every single quarter and two extra visits because why? Look, again, you're not trying to be that random agent. You want them to remember you. You want them to get familiar with how you handle things and you want to be top of mind when they're thinking about making that change. Now, here's something very crucial about picking a farm. Make sure that you can actually door knock it. On the west side, there are very few neighborhoods that you cannot door knock, but Beverly Hills is one of them. And one other thing to remember as well, don't door knock condominiums. Stick to single family homes. Condos are pretty much off limits. You do not want to be walking in there. That is trespassing and you really can't go door knocking in a condo building. Third way I like to get prepared is fully understanding what I should know in order to bring value to the neighborhood. We are the professionals, so it only makes sense that we should have a total inside and out understanding of the markets we are branding in and what those markets are saying or doing at any given time. We must be able to speak with authority and confidence about the market, including such topics as the recent sales, averages on market increasing or decreasing, why and how does that impact things, price and how it's impacting the market positively or negatively, and what sellers can do to stay ahead of things, whether or not the median price has adjusted favorably for sellers or not, current seller inventory versus buyer demand, the number of price reductions versus the number of homes that have sold over the asking price, is it a buyer's market, a seller's market, a foreclosure market, a short sale market? You know, these are all the things that you need to be aware of. And also, you got to be aware of what kind of pricing strategy trends are coming through so that you can be 
completely dialed in and have your clients fully aware of what to expect in any type of market and what the best strategies are to implement as well. So now that you understand exactly what you're supposed to be bringing with you and what you should know, this is one imperative thing that I forgot to add that you should definitely be prepared for when you're door knocking in a neighborhood. You gotta be aware if there's any sub neighborhoods within the neighborhood. Now, what does that mean? Well, in Mar Vista, there are quite a few homes that fall into different neighborhoods that offer different things such as location being closer to one of the top schools say you know bigger lots views as well now those things all impact value so in mar vista we have neighborhoods such as westdale truesdale we have mar vista flats we have mar vista hill we have south mar vista and we have mar vista knoll and again like i mentioned before they all offer different things which impacts value at the end of the day. So if you're not completely dialed in on that, then you are missing the whole big scope of things when you finally lock down a listing appointment after you've done so much hard work with your door knocking and then you come to find out that you weren't even aware that it sits in a particular sub neighborhood of the neighborhood that you work that commands a way higher price or maybe a lower price. But these are things that you've gotta know from the get go so that you can be the expert that they're expecting when you show up at the door. Now I get it, you know, having all this information, being aware of it, you know, trying to keep track of the sales and what just came on the market, it's daunting, it's 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 crazy. You know, you're already nerve-wracked with the fact that you gotta get out of your car in the first place and go up to a complete stranger's door and knock on it. Here's a little tip I wanna give you. You know, if you feel overwhelmed and you're just not remembering all the information that you were just, you know, studying and, and researching over, take a cheat sheet with you. No one's gonna know the difference. And the fact that you can provide real time value by answering the question by having the information with you no one's gonna think anything different they're actually gonna probably commend you for the fact that you had that information right there and then so take a cheat sheet you can have what just came on the market and what just sold so that you can speak and give direct quality information no matter what you're being asked. So we got everything dialed in now. You know what your farm is gonna be, you know whether you can door knock there or not, you know the terrain, you've got the values, you know all the data, you're ready to jam, right? So what do you need next? Well, the most crucial aspect that you can go with and include in your arsenal for door knocking is the newsletter. Yes, my friends, the newsletter is imperative to take with you because you know what, sometimes you're just not gonna catch people at the door. And so you wanna be able to leave something behind of value so that they know that you were there and they can connect with you if it's the right time as well. Now, you're probably going, oh my gosh, you just filled my brain with a ton of knowledge that I gotta work on and figure out all this information and research. Now you're hitting me with a newsletter. What do I even put in it, Eric? Well, I'm glad you asked because we're gonna dial right into it right now and guess what? If you're having problems whatsoever, you need a template or you would just like a copy of this so you can copy it, tweak it, or do whatever you want with it or have a better understanding of how you should set it up, feel free to drop a comment below. I am more than happy to send this exact one to you so you exactly know what to do and this can be one less thing you have to worry about before you hit your first door. Now, without further ado, obviously the first page takes into consideration the neighborhood. If you've got a slogan, drop it in there. Headshots, go for it. And make sure you have that contact information. Very clean. A lot of just blank space, that is a good thing. You don't wanna dial it up with too much information or photos, because it just gets overwhelming. Now, we're gonna get to the next page, open it up, and it's like a booklet, obviously, but we're dialing in the Mar Vista stats, and we're comparing quarter one, necessarily, with quarter two, and we're looking at number of sold listings, we're looking at average days on market, we're looking at median sales price, average price per square foot, and here's a new one, number of homes that sold over the asking price, number of homes that sold under the asking price, and number of homes that actually sold at the asking price. You know, people don't understand that price is everything in this market, and it is the key factor in making sure that you do fantastic and achieve your goals. Now, moving forward, also we wanna take a look at sales volume and see how that has been impacted as well, which has considerably dropped since the pandemic, but also we look at sold versus original price to see what the sold price actually got of the original price, whether it was higher or below, and right here we're 1% and 2% below. So that's kind of what that's all about. It gives a black and white numbers perspective. Down here we've got two recent sales that I had, and I like to point out too that I like to close deals within the first two weeks. This one happened to close in seven days, and this one happened to close within nine days of coming on the market. So, you know, it's all about price again, but let's move forward, next page. I like to highlight what the highest sold is in the neighborhood. I like to give examples of what the median sales price looks like. And also in Mar Vista, I'm not sure about your neighborhood, but finding a home for a million dollars or under is extremely hard to find and if impossible. So I like to show the examples that are still presenting themselves uh, rarely, but still presenting themselves nonetheless. So 
At the top, we've got the top three highest sold homes for quarter one. Then we've got the median sales, which is median price was around million six fifty, and then we've got opportunities under a million dollars. Then on the back page, again, to make sure just in case that person wasn't home, I've got a full on explanation of what those numbers meant on the inside so that if anyone was confused, they've got it written out completely to understand what quarter one did versus quarter four of 2019. Now, right below, last thing I'm gonna get to is a exclusive opportunity because I work with a lot of builders. So this right here is an exclusive opportunity that comes on the market June 1st. But hey, you know what? A lot of people love Mar Vista and they want their friends as neighbors. So this allows them to get the word out soon and quick. And again, you're providing value, which they're not gonna get anywhere else. Now, again, if you would like this template, I'm more than happy to send it to you. So please comment below. We're all in this together. I'm happy to help out. And on that note, have a great one. Hope you found value in this video and I'll see you soon.